Alright, this is the third video in the series where we're going to integrate um, simple mail transfer protocol in with our application. We're going to be using this system to use Gmail kind of as a cloud storage for the keystrokes that the user presses. So we're going to create this class called sender and we'll just put it in our handlers package and it's going to be static everything in it so might as well just hide the constructor because there's no need to create a new instance of it anywhere now as the first field let's create a private static final string senders gmail since this will be the gmail receiving the email and let's call it something i don't know what to put down maybe something like some gmail of some type doesn't really matter what you call it as long as it's yours this is going to be the email that you're going to use for the cloud storage um, like program daddy 99 sounds good and then we're going to need a password attached to this so that we can autonomously sign into this account so we can send an email as this person to this person and obviously the password would be hackerman 22 on baker street uh, we will be creating our receivers constant just in case you want to send with a different email to someone else to a password you don't have but I'm just gonna have this account send it to itself so I'll just be typing in the same email twice right here next couple of fields are going to be very important. Uh, they pertain to the library that we're using. I don't know a whole lot about them, just the basics, because I don't bother to learn every single object of every single framework I use. But uh, the properties object, that's actually not part of the library. Um, it's part of Java Standard Edition. But it's just going to set up properties for uh, how the mail server does things. Um, the session is going to just hold the states of the server and the client and just interactions. It'll also be useful for debugging. It'll throw problems and errors in a helpful way. For instance, if we send too many emails from the account, which I believe the max is, you're allowed to send uh, 700 emails a day with an account. So we shouldn't really run into that problem. And then the my message is just going to be, it can parse HTML documents, since when you send an email, it's the form of an HTML document, so we can format nice, pretty emails if you want to, but we're just going to throw in a raw string with some basic formatting, and then that's what we'll actually be using to send, is the uh, my message. The first and final method that this class will have is going to be what puts everything together to send off our email. Um, we're going to call it something like send send email. Uh, can't remember what I went with. Oh, send mail. That's what I'm going to call it. And it's just going to take in a string, which is going to be the body of our email. That's it. That's all this is going to. It's also going to throw throwable. Because there's a myriad of exceptions that can go awry and honestly I don't like the way the big huge try catch block looks so I just like to throw throwable because that'll still print out the stack trace and all the useful information and just doesn't give us that very nitty gritty super specific exception which we don't really need anyway so we're gonna make sure that our properties is not null so we're gonna get that from the system and this is just going to be kind of a hash map. That's what the properties sets up. There's essentially a hash map. It actually implements from hash table or extends from hash table. And you notice I put in SMPT, or I did that wrong. It should be it's simple mail transfer protocol, not simple mail or not simple mail protocol transfer. So I got the acronym wrong. 
and uh, I got this hash table from some docs somewhere. So the mail port is on four five eighty seven. That's the port that I guess I'm supposed to. We're supposed to make sure it's open for mail. Um, off true. Yeah, I have no idea what that means. And then start TTLS enable. It sounds sounds legit. Uh, otherwise it fails without those things set to true in the map so after those properties are all set up you can initialize the mail session from calling a static get default instance from the session and this is just going to take in mail server properties so it can assemble how it's supposed to rule the session with auth to true and start TTLS true yeah that's what the session needs so uh, now we're gonna create the, uh, the mail message or the my message which takes in the session and this is our parsable HTML document obviously a later object will need this because it doesn't just take in a string it takes in this is responsible for having a subject, recipients, uh, blind carbon copies, all that type of stuff is what the mail message is responsible for. Yeah, so the recipient is going to be us, and we can do things like blind carbon copy or carbon copy through the different constants, not in term, but in type. See the different options right there. Control space to view those options, by the way. And then the address is just going to be uh, I internet address, which is going to be parsed into some integer value. But there that goes. Plop in the uh, receiver's email. Or the sender's if you're too lazy to type out receiver. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so then we're going to subject. We can set the subject and we can set all different kinds of things by calling different methods inside the mail message. So we're going to set the subject to keystroke info. Once I press enter. Okay, good job. Alright, now type in the subject. I was looking at the recommendations. I didn't know that I wanted to type in that specific literal string, so whatever. So yeah, subjects, keystroke, info. That way we can just organize conversations with ourselves uh, if, you, if we want to. Otherwise, we can just have them all be under the conversation, keystroke, info. Then you open up your inbox. And set content. This is going to be, obviously, what's inside the email, the HTML document itself. Uh, and we have to specify that. Or I believe maybe parsing reasons, but I'm not really sure why I need to type in that text slash HTML. And then the email body, because that's our body of our email. Now this transport object is what's going to do the sending of the things. It's going to set up the threading, and it's going to set up and ensure the SMTP protocol goes and does its thing properly. So you're going to specify simple mail transfer protocol not simple mail protocol transfer that will result in a crash but also mail sesh I forgot I did that that sounds a little bit more you know catchy mail sesh I like slang sometimes when I'm programming variables uh, so transport dot connect we are gonna connect to Google's SM pt.gmail.com server so we can exchange data but before we can do that we have to set up our account privacy settings also don't forget to make sure your password and email is correct when you call it connect to Google's thing so anyway with the privacy we're gonna go down to my account and then click on signing into Google under sign in and security and we're gonna scroll down just keep on scrolling and scrolling and scrolling until you see allow less secure apps on that's us we are a less secure application and since we want to sign into ourselves 
uh, we need to make sure that's enabled. So I'd recommend creating like a new account that you can uh, just sign into from yourself. I actually created several accounts so I could spam people's inboxes and they'll end up with thousands of emails. I did that. So I'm going to swap out mine to Junkbot. That's what I use to spam emails with as I blur out that password so you can't see it. Now there's only one last thing to do and that is to test out our code that we've written. Of course mine will fail because I put in SMPT which is SMTP. I always say P first though. I don't know why. I guess I'm into alphabetical order when I'm talking about acronyms. But anyway, uh, so pass in a body like what is up with no question mark and then be surrounded with surround the uh, exception around with throwable because we threw throwable so we have to put it in the catch block and see yeah no provider for SMPT because that doesn't even make sense no such provider exception because there's no provider with that acronym so then I realized hey well actually I don't realize it just yet I'm still thinking about what's why I tried a new constructor out which doesn't exist. I thought it did. So then I'm like, hmm, wait a second. Simple mail protocol transfer? No, that's not right. Then I eventually have an epiphany. After I try out another constructor, that, oh, that, that one does exist. And then I run it again very confidently. Boom, it failed again. No, it hasn't. Okay, now it has failed again. All right. I thought maybe the question mark would make it not fail. Now we're going to go back in there and remove that because no, a stupid idea. Uh, SMTP, boom, that should fix everything. And now we just switch out everything. And just to be safe, Control F can do a nice find and replace. So uh, I got everything. Type in the wrong way followed my and then the right way and then replace all no string was found but hey at least I'm for sure that it'll work all right I'll give it some time and then it should have been sent it's still running because we have our key listener set up from the previous tutorials uh, now we can check the inbox to the email you sent it to not in that tab but in this tab we can go to junk bot or whatever you used and go into the Gmail account and boom look at that keystroke info was the subject and what is up is the body that's it for this tutorial next tutorial we're going to be integrating and creating a nice way to cache our keystrokes and send them through emails and make sure we don't hit the limit for a daily amount of emails sent per day but that's next tutorial that wraps up this one thank you for watching